But this is a woman's war, just as much as it is the men's. And the poet will look upon their pain, the pain of the women who have always been relegated to the edges of the story. Victims of men, survivors of men, slaves of men. And he will tell it, or he will tell nothing at all. They have waited long enough for their turn. Sing, muse, he said, and I have sung. I have sung of armies, and I have sung of men. I have sung of gods and monsters. I have sung of stories and lies. I have sung of death and life, of joy and of pain. I have sung of life after death, and I have sung of the women, the women in the shadows. I have sung of the forgotten, the ignored, and the untold. Hello and welcome back to you all to the channel for the very first time. I'm William Gwynn and today I'm going to be giving another review and today I will be talking about A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes who has also written Stonebind which was very popular in 2022 I believe. And so yeah I'm a bit late on reading A Thousand Ships as people said it was brilliant but after reading The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker which is just there I was thinking I need something else which as in this recent kind of event of authors picking up on the stories of the female characters in the Greek retellings who are often left to the periphery. Uh, the Science of the Girls picks up on the story of Briseis and I've done a review of that on the channel if you want to check that out. And so yeah I was really hooked by the idea of this thousand ships that doesn't just focus on one but really looks at so many different characters throughout the Trojan War. And so yeah after reading The Science of the Girls I was hoping I'd strike gold again. Well did I I did strike gold with half of what I read and then the other was kind of plain stone. Uh, but let's get into what the main review is going to be. So I'll just go into kind of the premise of the story and then my main thoughts. And so A Thousand Ships, uh, we're brought to the time period of the Trojan War, which is obviously a time period we've heard so much about and there's so many different tales, but A Thousand Ships has a very different perspective on it, where we follow about 12 POVs, a dozen POVs, or a few more, I think, actually. And most of these we only follow for one chapter, but there's quite a few who we also, they remain in the story from beginning to end. And so these are the wives and daughters of men who go off to fight in the Trojan War. These are women who are captured by Greek soldiers. These are in the city of Troy whilst it's being besieged. And as I said, the wives who are left behind as well, such as Penelope, wife of Odysseus. And so we've got a wide breadth of characters and motivations and impacts and circumstances that they're all experiencing. And I think Ashley Haynes does a brilliant job of really bringing the characters to life in that a lot of them we don't we don't remain with them for long but she does a great job of making them feel real and human and having their own characteristics that make them feel unique and um, dynamic within the story as well. And whilst the Trojan story is one that most of us are so, so familiar with, Natalie Haynes explores some of the lesser known elements of the Trojan War and also, I believe, um, fills in quite a few gaps of her own as well, particularly with some wives of soldiers who go off to fight and kind of, because it's sadly in Greek retellings and um, the Odyssey and the Iliad, the women who should play such a pivotal role are pushed to the periphery. And as kind of the, the quote that I read off to start this video suggests, they are forgotten and just pushed to the side. And so Natalie Haynes, along with quite a few authors like Pat Barker and Jennifer Saint is trying to kind of shine the light on the women in the Greek settings as they should because they play such a pivotal and interesting role and so yeah as I was saying A Thousand Ships I think it did a brilliant job of bringing so many of these women to life in these POVs even though a lot of them we don't follow for long what I would say going into a bit more of one of my critiques there's not many of the story but it was a bit quite major this one in that for the first third of the book, I thought that there wasn't a range of emotion. It was kind of dread and melancholic. And I think that is fine to have as an overarching theme for a book. But I thought there was no variability for the first third, which I thought made it seem a bit lifeless. Uh, but then it was strange. There was just a sudden snap. And I thought this story came to life really brimming. And it brought such a roller coaster of emotions. We see moments of joy, moments of despair, love and loss. Um, and so, so much more. Uh, the beginning of life and death. And I thought that Natalie Haynes did a brilliant job of reflecting on so many different characters, their response to all these things that they go through, which of course are so different from one another. And 
I thought she did a great job of kind of pairing that with what we know already, some of these depictions of characters that we recognise and subverting our expectations as well. I think Natalie Haynes did an absolutely brilliant job. So whilst I am kind of critiquing the beginning of this book in the sense that I thought that the tone and atmosphere that had no variability earlier on, that's obviously just my opinion, but I think that that does not mean you should stop reading. Definitely, if you're feeling the same as me with kind of those first 70, 80 pages, do push on because in my belief, it is totally worth it. The next uh, two thirds of the story I thought was absolutely exceptional. And yeah, it was probably more of the first quarter, but anyway, <laughs> I didn't go into the exact fraction of the book. But yeah, so that's kind of uh, my thoughts on that. I really liked how we don't stay with any characters for long. So even the characters that we follow throughout the book, we may have a chapter of them early on and then not see them for 100 pages and then return to them. Probably the character we see the most is Penelope. And I love how Natalie Haynes took the idea that Penelope is writing letters to her husband Odysseus. And of course, there's the huge time of the siege of Troy, but then also Odysseus taking years to actually return home. And throughout all of that time, Penelope is hearing of the exploits and songs sung about her husband. But whilst everyone's heralding him as a hero, her son is growing up without a father. She's being pressed into very uncomfortable situations and suitors are lining up to try and take Ithaca. And so that is just one of the ways that Natalie Haynes kind of subverts where Odysseus is always shown as a hero and he's shown in a very different light in this. And But returning to kind of how we don't see characters for quite a while, I love how that kind of seems to fracture the narrative, but in a way that suits the story. It seems to kind of reflect the kind of broken and irrevocably altered lives of the women whose lives we are following and also everyone who is involved in the Trojan War because this war is not glorified. We see the reality, we see the loss and the pain and the danger and the just huge amount of deaths. And as I said, it's not glorified at all. It's a tragedy to all. And as I said, I love how kind of Nancy Haynes uses her prose, but also the structure of this broken up narrative to reflect kind of those themes and emotions and the tone and atmosphere that things have changed and it is going against the natural order of life and death should not be a part and war should not be a part of life and it's showing how kind of these women and so many others their lives are broken by being pushed into situations they did not choose for themselves but they have little to no agency and they're forced into this and so yeah I thought that was really interesting and it really showed that Nancy Haynes is an accomplished writer and uses her structure to highlight the meaning and power of the text. As I said, this is a very powerful story where we see the anger, grief and confusion of our main characters. And they all come from, I think part of the genius of this book is that they are from a variety of different backgrounds. Uh, some are rich, some are poor, some are wives to soldiers, some have not married, but they all see the impact of the Trojan War and it is visited upon them. And this is fantastical because there are many mythological elements that come into play. It's not a historical fiction representation of the Trojan War. Those mythological elements are present. And so if you enjoy mythology, then do check out A Thousand Ships because that is present. And so to kind of sum up, Natalie Haynes has a very beautiful and vivid writing style uh, using prose and her structure to really effectively develop the characters and, as I said, the tone and atmosphere in what is, before anything else, a character-driven story. That's what I absolutely love about this, that there's many mythological retellings that focus on kind of the wider arcs of the story, uh, but this is character driven. It is all about the characters exploring the odysseys that they go through and how they change and the events that really act as pivotal moments in their life, mostly visiting tragedy upon them. And so, yeah, this is not a book for the faint of heart. I felt very emotional throughout quite a few of these scenes. And as I said, beyond kind of the opening, I thought this was a real roller coaster of emotions where we see the moments of joy as well as despair and we see love and loss death and life and all of that it's not just a one note book which when I first began I thought I need a bit more variability here and I was beginning to doubt that I would enjoy a thousand ships but I should not have because I was proved wrong and by the end reflecting in it I think the longer it goes from when I read it the more respect and enjoyment I have from this book and so yeah it's one that really grows on you over time and a thousand ships it's a great story I think another brilliant 
Greek retelling. I really need to read Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, but I'm slowly but surely working my way through the Greek retellings. And yeah, I thought that this is a brilliant introduction um, to kind of the female characters of the Trojan War, if you've not read any Greek retellings before. So yeah, I definitely recommend this as maybe if you're trying to get into the kind of this subgenre, then I think this is, would be a great place to start. Um, but yeah, they are my main thoughts for A Thousand Ships. Hopefully you hopefully found that interesting and maybe intrigued you in picking out A Thousand Ships. Or if you've read it already, hopefully it made you kind of reflect and enjoy hearing um, someone else's thoughts on the book that hopefully you enjoyed as well. But yeah, so they are my main thoughts for A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. Please do let me know whether you've read this, whether it's on your TBR or any of your favourite Greek retellings. But yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching and stay safe.